Asheville Farmstead School is a combined forest and farming school outside of Asheville, North Carolina on five acres of land that has access to farming and forest landscapes along with running water. I observed and interacted with the students and staff during a day at summer camp, Camp Farmstead, which is 8.30 to 3.30, Monday through Friday, and then I received a two-hour question and answer session after my observation day to ask the many questions I had. Immediately after the students left their cars for morning drop-off, the kids, ages two and a half to 10, went right to the natural world to play with nature and each other. They literally just ran wild and played in nature however they wanted to. Sometimes they were hidden in trees and I couldn't see them. They were on a nature ninja course where they can choose how to go across the course. They can walk across a bridge, hop over logs, hike up and down jaggedy paths, climb up rope. They could find bugs, butterflies. A teacher even found a toad and the students were gathered around the toad and nature observing. There was a small running creek where a few boys were making a water system to funnel this water to other parts of their nature play. It was extremely clever. I heard them talking about the water cycle, which they had learned about the day before Everyone during their craft where, the where they made is. a water cycle bracelet. It. It um, using well. the water, in. they there mixed it, it with dirt I and they it. made mud to make various compilations, <laughs> soups, kale chips, ice cream, uh, running water ideas. I observed flowers and plants that they were interacting with, climbing hills and trees, using You're rocks, just being super creative. They Hello? were deep in you making nature soup? play. Yeah, I think kind of sounds good. Yeah, He's getting the water for the soup. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, look at this. I made that soup um, two days ago. Okay, so I'm going to go on the nature ninja course. Bear with me because I've never done it. I'm going to explore. It's up there. some ninja ropes you can climb there's the school whoa cool whoa okay let's see let's see some oh god oh jeez okay i totally just <laughs> fell <laughs> let me start over they're making a dunkin donut cupcake <laughs> Dunkin' Donut Cupcake Shop. That's cool. Looks like they're stopping the water up there. All these kids keep following me wherever I go. So I'm veering off from the Nature Ninja to go up to the forest school classrooms that they use during the school year. Okay, looks like here is the forest school classroom. Yes, I am out of breath. This is a climbing wall. Pretty cool. And then a little bit of roof or a little bit of shade, I guess. What? A classroom, huh? Wow. A little different than what we're used to. And look, I found a bookshelf for the kids. Looks like this is their classroom that maybe they can go to in extreme weather. Not sure, but through the kitchen is the Oh, actually, no, sorry. Through the bath, through there is the bathroom for the kids. Yeah, and, um, like, none of this was here. Like, this creek didn't flow like this when we bought the property. So, okay, like, this is a like composting toilet that Miss, or Lauren, or Lala, as she's called, the director, her and her dad built the composting toilet. Cute little washing hand station. They got this composting toilet at cost because of what they're doing here, community, environmental education. Cool. Yeah, and it even comes with 
the toddler tush. Oh! And what's nice about this is it separates, it diverts. So the toilet is set up so that sol that solids go back and liquids go down. <laughs> Lovely. Because you want them to be separate. Yes. Right? Okay. And then it has cool. a fan. Ooh. I hope you're okay with well, poop. But it has a fan. Oh, my viewers probably don't want to see that. That dries it out. Wow. Because, so the reason why it's not stinky yeah, I mean, it doesn't smell, smell now. No, it like, doesn't smell bad at all to me. You know what I mean? Like once you open it, you can tell. Yeah. But um, it dries it out. The reason why composting toilets stink are because they're wet. Mm. And it's the wet. It's also the ammonia in our pee. Oh. So separating those it helps a ton. Oh, I and didn't so know the that. fan in the toilet is powered by a solar panel on the other side that runs to our marine battery that ensures that we don't send too many volts to the toilet. This has been composting toilet corner with Miss <laughs> yes, Lauren. And we have to do our own flushing. So that's what this bucket's for. What is in this? this scoop. So like if you pee, just like you would in a toilet inside, you have to flush. Cool, that's neat. Oh, looks yep. like we got a patron for the toilet. What's up, Duder? Uh, I need a band-aid. Okay, cool. Give me a second. Beep, beep. Oh, so hands. they developed, or I'm sorry, built the composting toilet because they don't want to get out of ratio with taking the kids up to the main schoolhouse where there is a toilet for them. So this toilet helps them to stay in ratio so they can watch these wild nature kids. The other thing again. Yeah, so this is the solar panel that's hooked to the battery to power our fan and there is like a regulator on the back of here to ensure that we don't over volt the battery or the toilet okay. and in case we ever need it it's got two usb charging ports on it <laughs> <laughs> bird feeder that's the school up there another cruise up there hi chickens Cool. Lots of nice chickens. They give the school eggs that they then sell during their market days. The school hosts a farmer's market, Inga Candler tailgate market, for the two towns in which the school is located. And there the school sells their eggs and produce that they harvest, as well as they bring in 27 vendors to sell their own goods. 75% of this market money goes to diversity scholarships for the school, and the other 25% goes directly to the local community. Asheville Farmstead School believes that children need exposure to farming in order to know where their food comes from and how we all, we all are in community together to produce food and flowers. Gardening brings self-sufficiency and resiliency. It's not just growing crops for food. It's important to teach about the pollinators and their role in farming. Without gardening, there are no bees. Without bees, there is no food. Without farmers, there's no food either. We need to plant flowers to provide sustenance for pollinators. The bees, butterflies, birds, wasps, and corn also relies on pollinators. If a pollinator does not bump a corn tassel, the corn will not produce. This little land, super cool. Sounds like a little hiking trail. Kids have been playing on it for like hours. He made a little mudslide. Here. We found a child who is cleaning the branches back here. After lunch, the kids bring their backpacks up, hang out by the tree. And when everybody's finished, we're going to go head up to the school. It's like a mud pie bench. There's a creek with running water. We dig all of this. Did you really? Yeah. Goes into the weapon circle. Yeah. So it's super duper hot out, so all the kids have flocked to the shade. And they really haven't complained at all. There we go. Nuggets in the shade. I'm trying so to get it frozen off. Paint. Okay, Oliver, you have. I am putting water on about a percent of the trampoline. <laughs> the end of the day. 
and the kids are just running around playing, waiting for their parents to come pick them up. There's the car rider line down you there. At the end of the day, the students told the teachers what they had observed in okay. nature, and then they had a story time. <laughs> they call the pickup line the rainbow line because it's shaped like a rainbow. End of day teacher tasks, and there's me, Jenny R. Observation Day. Thanks for watching. Check out my blog, sunshinejenny.com, for more on this school and other forest schools.